1961, our company went to dance in Russia as part of an exchange visit between the Kirov Ballet from Leningrad. And uh, we arrived there. The Kirov Theatre used to be the famous Mariinsky Imperial Theatre. So when I came to dance The Sleeping Beauty on that hallowed stage, I was so frightened, I was so nervous. Then there would be all these old Russian dancers and teachers and people in the audience. And I'm always terribly self-conscious when I know that there's somebody very distinguished in my profession sitting watching me. I, suddenly I have two left feet and steps that I can always do perfectly fail. It's just terrible. So I'm afraid that I dance pretty badly in The Sleeping Beauty, at least it seems so to me. But very fortunately, I had in the repertoire Ondine, and this new ballet they absolutely loved, and so that kind of restored my confidence a bit. But generally, I would say in, in Leningrad and in Moscow, where we again did The Sleeping Beauty, I, I don't think that I danced my best on that Russian tour, which I'm sorry, it was the only time I've ever danced in Russia. While we were in Leningrad, the rumours came that one of the Kirov Ballet's best dancers had defected as he was going to arrive in London for their season at the Opera House. Uh, it was all very quiet and sort of hush-hush. But when we got back to London, we learnt that uh, he was indeed one of the young, most brilliant dancers that they had. His name was Rudolf Nureyev, and he was 23 years old and by then dancing with a company in Paris. Now, Michael Soames, with whom I had been dancing for the last 10 years, ever since Robert Heltman had left the company, uh, had decided to retire after the Russian visit. A lot of people thought, even if they didn't say so, that at 42, it would be quite a good idea if I did the same. And probably I would have done if it hadn't been that Ninette de Valois invited Nureyev to dance Giselle at the Opera House uh, a few months later, in February, I think it would have been, 1962. And then she said to me one day, well, Nureyev is going to dance Giselle. Would you like to dance it with him? She offered it to me first, as it were. I immediately thought, he's 23, I'm 42, that's going to be like mutton dancing with lamb, and I thought it was pretty awful. So I said, well, I, I would like to think about it. And I did think about it, and I suddenly thought, well, he's going to be the big sensation all this season. I'm, if I don't dance with him, I will be absolutely a back number, nothing, because everybody will rush to the Nureyev performances, and somebody else will be dancing them with him. So I took my courage in both hands, and I said, yes, I'll do Giselle with Nureyev.
in retrospect, I believe that our partnership wouldn't have been such a great success were it not for the difference in our ages. Because what happened was that I would go out on the stage thinking, who is going to look at me with this young lion leaping 10 feet high in the air and doing all these fantastic things? And then Rudolph had um, really a deep respect because I was this older, very famous, established ballerina. And he felt a bit, well, when I'm on the stage behind, beside her, who's going to look at me? So it sort of charged the performance that we were both going out there inspired, egged on, as it were, by the other one, and also with absolutely the same objective about what this performance should produce, and somehow it just worked. After the first few rehearsals of Giselle, Margot started to trust me, and things went very smooth, and uh, every rehearsal, uh, it was like a performance. I, I remember Cordoba people crying during rehearsal, tears running down their cheeks. Those performances of Giselle, they became a historic event. Uh, then Margot asked me to do Swan Lake with her. I flew in from Denmark and uh, I sat in Madam's box and I watched first act and I suddenly see extraordinary thing. There's a, uh, in the first act when uh, Prince meets Odette, uh, they have a mime, they start gesticulating. I, didn't, I wasn't trained like that in Russia. It, it was a great shock to me. And uh, I came to her and, and I said, well, he was so beautiful and that he did mime so well, but I couldn't find place for myself. I can't do that performance. I'll destroy it. She said, just you try. Then, however, I agreed to dance with her. Swan Lake, I couldn't refuse. And we started to work and uh, wasn't as smooth as Giselle. Uh, we had a lot of arguments and differences. And uh, uh, suddenly she told me at one moment that uh, her first Swan Lake was 1938. That was my birthday. Uh, so I started to laugh. And However, we worked out a version. And when we went on stage, all differences, all arguments were forgotten. We become one body, one soul. We moved in one way where it was very complementary, every arm movement of every head movement. Uh, there were no more uh, cultural gaps, uh, age difference. Uh, we've been absorbed in characterization. We became the part. And uh, public was enthralled, I think only because we were enthralled with each other and with what we did with the role. First thing she taught me, it was great professionalism. She had the way she worked. Her work is very thorough. But get out, do it, do it well, and have a good time. Don't linger. Get on with it. It was very lucky for us uh, to have those glorious years. She became a very, very great friend of mine. She, she, to me, she is a part of my family. That's all what I have, only her.